Bonjour. I don't know if anyone can see or hear me. Okay, we can see in here. All right, that's good. All right. Okay, bonjour, everyone. Uh, Lyle and Deshnikas, Baudouin, White Me and Dog, Louisiana, and Deutsch BI. Um, my name is Lyle Simmons. I am a CPN, <clears throat> and I currently live, I was born and raised in um, Louisiana. Um, excuse me, I'm not, I'm still very new to these Zoom things. I've only done about two or three of these. Um, so, I guess I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I've been making regalia for um, know, close to 20 years now, I guess. Um, I, had the, I had the pleasure of growing up in a family that was very crafty oriented. Um, so I spent a lot of time in um, the ceramic shop uh, owned by my mother and grandmother and they always kept me busy kind of doing some crafts. So, you know, busy hands keep, uh, keep me out of trouble. So, um, I guess uh, if, we, if we're gonna start talking about uh, someone making regalia, um, I guess it's, it's important to first identify what your needs and wants are um, in regards to making regalia. Uh, you know, being a CPN member, you could be looking to make something for just ceremonies or maybe uh, going to um, powwows, uh, going to reunion, um, family gatherings, district meetings, things like that, you might wanna wear uh, regalia. Um, so I guess we'll go over what, what regalia is. Regalia is just a French word for uh, fancy clothing. In, in Potawatomi, we call it um, our mazatawan um, or fancy clothes. So, um, and it's, it's anything you wear to a, a, a significant social gathering. Um, it could be something as simple as a ribbon skirt for women, a, a, um, a, ribbon, a ribbon shirt for men, uh, a pair of mechanism, some moccasins, uh, and, you know, could be all the way up to something as fancy as a powwow outfit, you know, like a, a full, full body regalia. Um, so I guess, you know, first, first you need to identify what, what, what your needs are. Um, and then... Um, you know, kind of start with, start kind of slow with things to kind of kind of ease in and see what you might, you might be good at or something you might like. So um, that you can start with beginner projects, things like I, rec uh, I mentioned a while ago, uh, making a pair of moccasins, um, making a choker, uh, a ribbon skirt or um, ribbon shirt, if you're actually good with a sewing machine. I'm, I'm personally not very good with sewing machines, so I, I don't sew much. Uh, but um, there, there's also available, you can kind of get like these little kits that they sell um, on native owned uh, trade online trade markets, um, moccasin kits, um, little, just little clothing kits you can kind of start off with to kind of get your hands going and, and see what you might like. Um, um, there's also available, you know, when, when you start going back to um, gatherings like, you know, we're doing this virtual thing now, but um, next year, of course, you'll have the CPN gathering, as well as the Potawatomi Gathering of Nations. There, there's a lot of uh, opportunities to kind of learn, um, not so generic crafts, but more Potawatomi related crafts, um, making like Shishiguin uh, rattles out of uh, things found at, in the homelands, um, as well as, uh, you know, just uh, working with with things that are they're kind of native to to the homelands like birch and uh, quills and things like that 
Um, me living in Louisiana, I don't have access to quills. Um, well, I, I can get them online, but there's no porcupines here. There's no birch trees here. So, um, you know, where you're located is also going to dictate what crafts um, or regalia you might be able to make. Um, <clears throat> uh, when you when you start out making regalia, it's 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 good to know your expectations and limitations as well, because certain crafts or uh, regalia may not be, you may just not be able to make it due to limitations, maybe physical or mental. Um, some people have poor eyesight, poor, uh, poor dexterity, um, nerve damage, things like that might keep you from doing certain crafts. Um, for me, uh, I have ADHD, so I can't really stick to one craft for very long. As you can see on my table back here, I've got like eight things going at one time. So I know that I'd never be able to just be a professional artist and take commission for for projects so you know, it's, just, it's just good to have uh those limitations in your mind whenever you're um thinking about what you might want to work with um and then you know one, once you get past the kind of beginner level with crafts you may want to consider um finding a uh like a mentor or someone a, a teacher someone to help you along um, if you find that you like sewing, uh, you know, there's there's people you might reach out to in your local community or other Potawatomi communities um, that might help you with designs and techniques and uh, things like that to kind of uh, help you. Okay. So um, when you're when you're looking for a mentor or a, a teacher, there's we Luckily, we live in 2021. There's all kinds of um, online options. Uh, you can find people uh, in other bands or in our band, being that we're all spread around the nation, even the world, uh, people that may know things that they can share with you. Um, if you can find people that are willing. Some, a lot of times you'll find that people are very reserved in sharing um, their skills and techniques because people will take them and then kind of profit off of them and not give credit to the original teacher. So uh, just, just kind of be wary of that because um, it, can, it can sometimes not be easy getting people to share uh, their techniques and, and skills with you. Um, so it's, it's really good that we have opportunities to reach out online so you're not just stuck with your local community um, trying, to, trying to find skills and techniques. Uh, so <clears throat> Uh, one place to, to look that works for me, that has worked for me in the past, um, when you're looking for mentors and people to teach you things, uh, like I live in Louisiana, so I'm not local to any part of Watermere Nations um, or bands, so I, I rely on going to local bands um, for inspiration or techniques and help with certain things. Uh, so you can go to powwows put on by certain bands uh, local to your area or even just Native American organizations. Um, where they'll often have seminars and, and classes and things like that. Um, and it could take, <clears throat> like I was saying, it takes, <clears throat> it can take years for people to kind of warm up to you and, and really trust you enough to uh, share their techniques and, and skills with you. So just stick to it. It may take even years of going to these powwows, interacting with people in, in the communities, um, attending meetings and things to kind of get them to trust you. Um, I was mentioned earlier that I, I live in Louisiana, so my ability to do certain things is uh, limited to the resources around me. And also I have, I have certain things that I like to do. Um, I like to mainly focus on, I'm, I'm, I don't work so well with hard materials like metals or, or uh, wood. So you, you won't see me doing a lot of metal or woodwork. I prefer to work with leather and feather and and beads and things of that such, um, and it's just it's just something that I that I prefer. Um, <clears throat> another way to look up methods and and skills is you know paper resources or, or physical resources, books, um, online material, and things like that. Um, I've got tubs over here just just full of books on different crafts and and techniques that, um, and history and things like that. Uh, Native owned businesses, you can reach out to them. They'll often have a lot of material um, and resources that you can uh, that you can ask for. Um, 
let's see, uh, travel resources. Uh, CPN has a lot of travel resources now. Um, Kelly Mosto does a, a great job with um, the uh, Heritage Center and managing a lot of those resources. Um, so you know you can go through the, the Cultural Heritage Center and they'll have a lot of a lot of things that you can you can learn through them and um, figure out mm, kind of on your own. Um, I tend to, to have kind of self-taught a lot of the things that I that I do. Uh, growing up at a craft store, I kind of can look at a lot of things and just kind of tell how they work and and kind of figure them out by looking. So uh, some crafts come easy for me. Um, it, it may or may not be the same for you. Um, some examples of crafts you may you may want to pick up. There's there's tons. Uh, that can you can just use to add to your your Mazatlan uh, leather work. You know you can make a, a whole ton of different things like that. Uh, clothing, uh, moccasins, um, even certain types of jewelry, hair ties, things like that. Uh, you can work with wood. You can use make hand items, um, mirror boards, Szechuan uh, rattles, things like that. Uh, bead working. There's there's several different methods of bead work. Uh, uh, Miss Laura is really great at loom beating. Um, she's Potawatomi and she's always really helpful and eager, eager to teach. Um, <clears throat> there's also uh, Bill Hobia. He's pretty good at uh, peyote stitching, I believe. Um, he may or may not be willing to teach. I don't know. I'm kind of throwing him out there. Uh, and then there's just online resources. There's also single needle, two needle applique, um, as far as bead work goes um, and things like that. Uh, birch bark, um, birch etching, birch medallions, doing quill work on, on birch. Uh, those are those are woodland style crafts that you could add to regalia. And it, it, those heavily depend on if you can get the resources to make those crafts. Um, there are a lot of people, both Potawatomi and Ojibwe, that are willing to ship you some birch. You just got to get in contact with them and, and uh, you know, request it. They may or may not. Some of them will send it to you for free, just pay shipping or whatever. You know, some of them may charge you because it is a lot of work going out collecting that birch. It's not something you just go to the store and buy. You actually have to go out to the woods and find it and peel it, carry it out. Um, finger weaving is another thing. Uh, men and women, more so men, wear uh, finger woven sashes and uh, garden, garners, uh, garters. Um, so that may be something that you're, you, you, you could, you know, consider it's requires a lot of dexterity. So if you have um, nerve damage or poor finger movement, you just may, may want to consider something else. Um, metal works another thing. Uh, you, you make silver brooches and conches, um, conchos. Uh, brooches were a big thing for Potawatomi women. Uh, Post-European contact is a sign of wealth and things. So you'll see a lot of women wearing silver brooches. Um, you know, I guess, I guess that kind of about wraps up what I have to say. Um, I, I, I'll go to kind of the question and answer. I know I've only took about 15 minutes of my hour, uh, but does anyone have any questions? I'll go to some questions and maybe that'll get us kind of going. All right, so. Let's see, does anybody have a question? Open Q and A. Who else is in here? Anybody have a question for me regarding any kind of crafts? Okay, here we go. Let me get up to someone. Can you go more into what porcupine quills might be used for? Okay. Um, I should have dug out uh, some uh, more stuff in here. I do have porcupines somewhere, but uh, porcupines are used for a lot of things. Um, they're used to adorn things mostly. So uh, if you look up porcupine quill work, just Google it and, and a lot of examples will pull up. Uh, you can make medallions, um, little boxes. Uh, there's a lady that makes some that they sell at the uh, cultural heritage store. Um, they're really amazing boxes. They're real small, very uh, intricate, um, hundreds of dollars for a really tiny little basket, but you'll see why once you, once you see one in person. Um, so the process of a porcupine, getting these quills, a lot of times you can get them from a roadkill porcupine or 
um, the old the old way would be to go find the porcupine. Um, a lot of people will use uh, pieces of leather or like a, a rug, and you kind of just step on the porcupine's tail, r hit the back with the rug, and the the quills just come off into the rug, and then you release the porcupine, and it's just goes on about its life um, without actually really harming it. Um, then you have to take those quills, you clean them, um, and then dye them. And then there are certain methods. Uh, there's, there's, I think probably a dozen or more different ways to you uh, do quill work. Um, some are as, from as basic as just sticking through uh, some bark and folding it over, all the way to using thread and and uh, making cordage and all kinds of things out of out of porcupine quills. Um, it it can get pretty int intricate. Um, are there any books in particular you would recommend starting with? Oh, um, you know, uh, I don't have any right off the top of my head, uh, but you know, you just, when you're looking for material, as far as a craft goes, you just find that craft and you can get online and Google it. And like I said, we live in a, the modern age where things are so much easier accessible than they were before. So Amazon has, sells a lot of books for techniques. Uh, there's a lot of live videos. Uh, Crazy Crow, I believe, uh, put out a bunch of videos on regalia making, so you can find those um, <clears throat> and kind of see where to start. Uh, uh, there's also, um, some of you may or may not know, uh, I moderate a Facebook group um, with the Potawatomi, our, our CPN name, um, where I do uh, tutorials on there as far as uh, some crafts that I do. So that, that may be another resource that you're, you could be interested in. Uh, let's see, where, where can we find the types of regalia that are used to help us decide where we want to start? Where can we find the types of regalia that are used to help us decide where we want to start? Um, types of regalia. So it, it depends on like what you're looking for. Do you mean regalia for uh, regalia for ceremony? Do you mean regalia for dancing at, at powwows or social gatherings? Um, it just really depends on what you want to to make. So uh, you know, online I would start online for any kind of resources. Is what I recommend if you want to do uh, just just to go to, you know, the roundhouse or any kind of ceremonies or district meetings, um, you know, just a ribbon shirt, just Google ribbon shirt. You can buy those all over the place or you can make them yourself if you're good with the sewing. Um, you may want to see if you can find a local class for that. A lot of uh, tribes have cultural heritage centers. I think almost every federally recognized one has one. I think it's kind of part of being federally recognized. Um, so find a local tribe and uh, call them up and let them know that you're a member of a tribe, but you live locally and, and you're interested in any kind of cultural meetings. And if they have theirs, they're open to um, other tribes or to the public, then you might be able to attend one of those. Um, and then powwows is another thing. If you're interested in doing a powwow dance, um, historically, you would <clears throat> have one of these dances given to you um, and you would be brought into the circle to dance. So, uh, you know, you can talk to members of your family or other other dancers in, in the tribe or in your community. Um, you can go out into a powwow and ask ask people if they'd be willing to teach you or talk to you about it. If you're interested in grass or chicken dance, you can you can talk to me. I, I'll talk to you about the grass and chicken dance. It's fine. Uh, you message me on Facebook. Um, I'm, I'm usually available work nights, and I'll talk to you about it. But uh, like I was saying about going to powwows, you could it could take a year or two or three or more because powwows generally only happen once or twice a year. So to get to know some of these people and get them to trust you where they'll, you know, gift, gift you a dance, um, it, it could be a journey. Um, now, if you just, we do live in a modern age and a lot of people just kind of just start dancing. So if that's something you want to do, go to a powwow, find somebody, uh, you know, find a style that you like and then kind of research that style. And, and it, it's honestly best if you find some mentors and people that dance that style to kind of help you put together an outfit and teach you the stories behind the dance and, and make sure you're doing that, that part right. Uh, 
let's see can you show us some of your creations uh I don't have anything finished sitting around i can show you some things that i've, I've got that i'm going to finish oh actually I do. let me see uh, okay I'll show you some parts of my chicken outfit that I've made. Uh, let me see. So this, this is a shishigwin. This is a shaker that I dance with. These are um, yellowtail flicker feathers. These come from up north. I live in Louisiana. I had to trade for these. The, uh, the shaker itself I made. <clears throat> While in Canada at the Gathering of Nations, we made a shaker and I kind of just, uh, I was pretty quick with it. I made this in, you know, a couple hours, uh, brought it home, finished it up, wrapped it, added the feathers. So that's what I dance with. Chicken dance is carry a shaker or a rattle. Um, dance stick. This has a hawk talon on it. Um, I, I believe this was a hawk I found on the side of the road. Um, so it must have been meant for me. Uh, took it and preserved it, stiffened it, <clears throat> added it to this uh, wood, added some, uh, some, uh, that would be an otter. And then I actually sent this to a buddy, a Lenny Lenape buddy of mine, uh, Lenny Harmon. Um, and he did the, the bee work because that's peyote stitch. I do not know how to do the peyote stitch. Um, <clears throat> I have my eagle fan. This is actually porcupine quills right here. This little rosette, you can see that. I had a buddy of mine do that. I paid paid for him to do the rosette and then I added the eagle feathers. Um, so that's just one example. That's a medicine wheel. Just one example of the thing that can be made with, uh, with quills. And of course that's a um, bald eagle uh, wing fan and this I actually have not got a chance to wear because i made it right before the rona hit um this is a uh pro loop um breastplate that i haven't quite finished um it's made of beaded rope and i, I beaded that that is an example of a bead trap that you can do it's just bead wrapped rope and then i have these uh, sweet grass, that's another example of a craft that you can do, it's traditional to Potawatomi. Um, I got this from uh, Sweet Grass and Cinnamon. I believe he, he may be Potawatomi, he may be Ojibwe, but he makes amazing things with sweet, sweet grass. Um, and I'm, I plan on adding that to this, and then that'll be complete. Uh, I'm gonna have some old skunk beads and trade glass flinch beads there. You get pretty fancy with this stuff. I and mean, regalia is, once you start, it's a, a never ending thing. You know, just like any kind of clothing trends, regalia comes with trends. Uh, the grass dance outfit I started with 15 years ago is long out of date. Uh, it's a big yarn outfit that nobody, nobody wears that style anymore. So things change. And, and as you go, you'll, you'll kind of, once you start making regalia, it kind of never ends. Um, let's see. When looking at regalia, are there Potawatomi specific techniques that we might want to stick to rather than generic native techniques? Or does that matter at all? Um, I mean, I guess it really depends um, what, what you're trying to make. Uh, if, if you're making like a powwow outfit, um, powwow is pretty pan-Indian. So there's not, not really, as far as powwow dances that are uh, traditional to Potawatomi, uh, grass dance, um, northern traditional kind of, uh, woodland dance, um, that, that's ours. And then um, the northern style of traditional women, kind of washboard dance. So outside of that, you're, you're going to be kind of doing somebody else's thing. Um, so that's just something to consider um, as well. And, and then when you go to, when you go to powwows or any, uh, event where there's different people from different tribes, you can kind of pick out different things that'll be uh, added. 
So an example would be, if you look over my shoulder, this is my bustle for my chicken dance bustle. So the chicken dance is not a Potawatomi dance. It's a uh, Blackfeet dance. I had a couple of friends give it to me some, a couple of years ago. Uh, so this is an Eagle bustle, but you see the, the trailers I have are Potawatomi applique design. So the trailers would identify me as Potawatomi, even though I'm doing a, a dance from some, another tribe dance. So, you know, if, if you want to stick to Potawatomi stuff, I, I, you know, some of the, the, the crafts that I was naming earlier are, are specific to our homeland, the quill work, birch, birch wood working, um, uh, bead work, two needle applique is a big thing with our tribe, um, loom beading as well, uh, amazing bags uh, come from our tribe. So uh, check out Laura Haywu. She makes incredible um, bandolier bags with her loom. Uh, let's see, where can I get a pattern for women's shirts with attached shawl? Um, I believe the Cultural Heritage Center has those, those patterns. Um, and also you can just, you know, online, all, all kinds of those native uh, craft supply places like um, Matoska, Not Bay, um, Crazy Crow, Wandering Bull, all these places kind of offer uh, patterns for making um, outfits. Um, let's see, what would be the difference between regalia for dancing and regalia for powwows? So regalia for, for dancing and regalia for powwows, that's kind of the same thing. So powwows, you, 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 you go to dance. Um, and there's all kinds of different styles. Uh, if you go to the CPM powwow, you've seen some of these styles. You'll see the gourd dance. Um, that's done in the South. We're, we're the only band of Potawatomis that do the gourd dance. Um, <clears throat> and straight dance as well. You'll see a couple of our members do the straight, that straight dance. Uh, straight dance is a southern war dance, um, mainly from the Kiowa, I believe. Uh, I have a lot of friends down here at straight dance. They go and do uh, uh, war dances that last for days out in the hot Texas sun. Um, it's it's a whole another level of thing, but it's not Potawatomi. It's it's Texas dancing. So um, that's a thing. You know, if if you get into your local uh, local powwows and meet people, they'll invite you to their dances. Um, and you can go take part in their stuff, um, even though it's not Potawatomi. Uh, and then, you know, so there's different, there's different regalia for different styles. So depending on what style you're doing, you'll have completely different regalia. Uh, could you discuss the appropriate way to make feather fans or decorate a feather to smudge? Um, so I actually did a tutorial on this in, in the Facebook group I moderate. Uh, so there's, there are, there, um, um, so, so first you have to get the fans, uh, the feathers. There's different ways to do that. Uh, as far as eagle feathers go, um, the laws regarding those are a little more strict. Um, you'll you'll have to usually get those from a repository. Uh, if you find them locally, um, usually if you find a whole eagle carcass, it'd probably be best to to kind of report that, uh, unless you can tell that it died of natural causes. Um, but other, other birds of prey, like hawks, um, you can find those all day. They, they usually, unfortunately, get hit by cars. And uh, as a federally recognized person, you can, you're, you're free to pick those up, take them home, and, and make a fan out of them. Uh, uh, as far as the way I was taught, um, when you get a, a, a carcass or feathers that you're going to use, once you um, process them, you go through and you clean out. Um, the pieces that you're not going to use, you you cover them in borax, let them dry out completely, um, pull them apart. Any pieces that you don't use, uh, been told a couple of things. Some people say you burn them in a certain ceremonial way. Some people say you just leave them out in the woods as they naturally would have been and let nature and predators take care of the rest. Um, and then and then you you would, you would make your your item out of whatever you're using. Um, always handle your feathers in a, in, a, in a good way uh smudge yourself before you you handle anything sacred not just feathers but any any regalia that that you 
few years or where. Um, don't be on, under influence of any kind of drugs or narcotics or alcohol and things like that. Uh, always keep uh, animals away from your, your stuff too, even even the dog or a cat, you know, house, household animals. Not, none of that should be close to your regalia or your, your area. Um, let's see. Um, and then um, I'm actually going to be doing a tutorial on the, on a feather fan. I have a golden eagle one I'm going to be making here pretty soon. Uh, so if any of you guys want to get on Facebook and, and join that group, I'll let you in. And uh, you just go to the top and type in tutorial and a bunch of things will, will pop up. Um, it's The name of it is Citizen Potawatomi Nation. Um, there's, there's all kinds of different groups. Um, the one that I moderate has, uh, it's a, like a blue field and it has Nanabozo in a, in a canoe um, paddling uh, through. Uh, but there's all kinds of different groups on Facebook. Uh, there's even um, one specifically for regalia making. Um, I don't know who runs that one though. Probably find out. All right, so got about 30 minutes left. Um, does anybody have any further questions? Uh, you know, um, trying to think of anything else worth mentioning. I had an itinerary, I could have swore it would have stretched out a little further than this. Uh, let's see. But uh, I'm not that great of a public speaker, so I tend to underestimate how long things are gonna take. All right, let's see. Um, yeah, uh, as far as, as you know, once I said earlier that uh, once you start making regalia, you know, it's it's kind of a dangerous road to start down uh, because once you start, you kind of get carried away and you'll end up with boxes and boxes of stuff and all kinds of unfinished projects and, and things like that. Um, and it, it can kind of be expensive, uh, you know, to make good looking stuff good and to get good quality things especially if you don't live in a place that has those resources that you need to make the things that you want to make. Um, let's see. Uh, any other questions from anyone? Let's see, I've answered quite a few. Uh, any questions? Uh, okay, so I'm gonna ask how to decorate a feather to smudge. Um, kind of the same way. If it's it's up to you what you want to decorate. Um, the the way I make smudging feathers, I usually um, extend a feather. So you would take take an eagle feather and use um, appropriate size dowels or skewers. And you can get you can get these anywhere. Any kind of store, just wooden dowels, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, wherever. I have all kinds of different sizes for uh, various feathers. And then you'd uh, kind of extend that feather shaft, to put, put the tip off, uh, extend the feather shaft, and then I have uh, this heat and heat shrink tube. This is the more modern way to do it. I have all these different sizes, two different colors, black and white are the only ones I really use. But it's uh, this Tektron, and you can just Google it online, just the heat shrink tubing. Um, it's for electricians, um, but I use it for feathers. Uh, that's the more modern way. If you wanna go the old fashioned way, you can cut a little strip of leather. Uh, you'll have to measure it very carefully to wrap evenly around the, the, the quill, uh, glue it in place, and then stitch it all the way up. And then I'll usually um, at the bottom add a lanyard uh, for your wrist because you don't want to be smudging and drop your feather. You never want to drop your feather. You especially don't want to drop it in fire. Uh, anybody else have any questions? This way you guys are going to be able to talk to me, but... I don't know how to make it do that. Let's see. So 
Um, as far as regalia for uh, powwows, you can start out pretty slow um, and work your way up if you're not really sure what style of dance. Um, I just saw something pop up at the bottom, but I don't know. Uh, if you're not certain what style of dance you want to do, um, you can kind of start out basic uh, and and work up from there. Oh, he said they can talk now. So, okay. So you guys are welcome to talk to me if you want. I'm talking person, but uh, you know, for for men, make a ribbon shirt, some moccasins. I hear somebody. A uh, bandolier or a sash, and you can go to any powwow and kind of get involved. Uh, dance the social dances, dance the inner tribals. Um, same thing for women. You can make a, just a regular basic camp dress or a tea dress, uh, belt, um, maybe a choker set, uh, and moccasins, of course. Moccasins, you got to have moccasins. Um, and just go out and dance social dances, um, two steps, uh, maybe just the regular inner tribal dances, things like that. Um, and just get involved and make, uh, make acquaintances. Any other questions? We've got about 20 minutes, guys. So if you guys have any other questions, uh, let's see. Um, as far as storing your regalia, uh, really depends on who your, your mentor is, what kind of regalia you have. Uh, for my dance regalia, I usually put them in these big garment bags. So you see, this is old grass dance outfit. Outfit here. That's a shawl that I have belonging to my grandmother. Um, and this kind of keep the bugs off of them. You can put things in there, uh, cedar or dryer uh, cloths to kind of keep them fresh because some of these things you can't really wash that frequently um, or they'll come apart um, and, and dropping them off the dry cleaner you know so anywhere from five hundred to thousand dollars worth of regalia at a dry cleaner can be a pretty uh, daunting thing um, and then certain items of course with traditional or spiritual significance are, are put in certain places like on the walls, feathers. I was always taught that they should be um, out and because of, because of the stories that go along with these feathers, they should be on display and out living their life, not crammed into a box somewhere generally. So, all right. I guess if there's uh, no other questions, uh, any other questions about any specific, any specific uh, crafts or things you might be interested in? Um, talk about a little bit about gathering your own supplies if, if you can. Uh, I was talking earlier about porcupines going, and if you live in a place that has porcupines, uh, finding them on the side of the road as a federally recognized Native American, you are welcome to pick up any species you find in nature. Um, whoa. Uh, with limitations there, of course, being um, eagles. I, I would definitely tread lightly with those uh, because they, they are poached and um, finding naturally molted feathers kind of here and there, perfectly fine. If you find a full dead eagle, I would definitely, definitely, uh, call and report that to Fish and Wildlife. Uh, one more time, the name of your Facebook group. It is just Citizen Potawatomi Nation. It's, um, it's, it's got a blue banner at the top with Manabozo. Is, Manabozo is a rabbit type figure um, in a canoe on it. There is another one that has the seal. Um, you're welcome to join that one. That one gets a little more political, different, different type atmosphere, different group, but still a good one to join. Um, would it ever be appropriate for a woman to wear an item typically worn by men or vice versa? Um, I guess it all comes up 
comes down to what you're personally comfortable with, um, I guess that would be more like a two-spirited discussion. I know in some places it's more acceptable than other places. Um, I have seen uh, two-spirited people dancing in a category that they were probably not the sex born into that category, I guess you could put, but no one really seemed to have much of an issue about it. Uh, so I guess just do what makes you comfortable and what, what goes along with your teaching. Uh, do you do any finger weaving? I've tried to get started. I can show you, I think maybe. Uh, I had done a little class of finger weaving where I made a tiny little piece. And I don't know exactly where it's at, but I made a piece about three inches long and it, it took a little while. It was okay. Um, it was, it was fun, uh, but it, it is very, it, 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 you, want, you gotta get used to it. You make sure your fingers are really, really sore. Um, I'm having trouble making a board for measuring the yarn. Any tips? Unfortunately, I don't have any tips for that. I don't, don't finger weave a lot. There are specific Facebook groups for that. You go in there and type in finger weaving. There are tons of uh, resources there. People will give you all kinds of tips. Um, uh, Facebook is a great resource for, uh, for crafts and regalia making. There's generally uh, specific groups for every little specific craft you can think of. There's multiple groups for each one. You can get in those and there's, I mean, there's everything from uh, pine basket, needle wheat and making uh, birch baskets, uh, birch uh, carving, engraving, we're gonna call that etching, birch etching, uh, quilling, porcupine, uh, roach making, just everything. If you don't store your eagle feathers in a cedar box, how do you keep dust off of them? Would you mind showing a close-up of your smudging feather wrap? English. Um, you don't keep dust off of them. You use them. You, you take them out. You take them outside. Uh, get them some air. If it's raining, let them get a little water. If their feathers, it's not going to hurt them. Um, but the thing is to, to keep them moving around. Uh, the regalia items. Now, for feathers that if you do live in a, in, a, in a place where you don't use your feathers very often um, or you have uh, bug problems, um, if, you, if you see all my other feathers are actually in those, those cedar boxes over there. The ones that, I, I, they're either <clears throat> small items that I don't use very often or they're just feathers that are waiting to be crafted into something. Um, definitely store those in a cedar box. Um, away from animals, away from bugs, if you can. Um, and then would you mind showing up a close-up of your feather wrap? So this, I guess you may mean the fan here. Um, I have one, it's kind of coming undone, you can see, but it's, it's a whip stitch done with uh, deer rawhide lacing. So you, you get this rawhide from online suppliers or you can find it locally, uh, people that do brain tanning. Um, you wet that rawhide and just do a whip stitch around this. And it's kind of, you can see it's kind of coming off, but the rawhide, once it gets so hard, it's so hard that it's not gonna go anywhere because it's, it's on there. Um, I whip it on there wet and then once it dries, that rawhide shrinks down. Uh, just put a piece of cloth. I usually put tobacco in this cloth put the cloth over the tip that covers the bone, whip that with uh, that rawhide and add another leather uh, wrist strap at the end. And so then you have your, your fan. All right, um, let's see, cause that's, that's what I smudge with. I use my, I use my wing fan to smudge with. Uh, Let's see. Question. Right. <clears throat> and like I was saying, um, I will be doing a tutorial on <clears throat> how I uh, wrap those fan handles. Um, and I'll have kind of some pictures hopefully to go along with it. All right, any more questions?
All right. Um, let's see. If I have any other things that I could show you. Um, well, not really. I have some items back here that I'm making. Um, you know, I showed you this shishig one, this rattle. Um, there's different different ways to do different things. So you'll find, um, like with beadwork, if you like doing beadwork, there's there's all different kinds of beadworking. Uh, if you like doing quill work, there's all different kinds of stitching of quill work. So if you if you find one that you don't necessarily like, or maybe you master it and get bored with it, move to a different kind, learn a different one. So like with the shishig one, this is a gourd grown. Um, on Walpole Island. So it's unceded Potawatomi territory. This is very, very special to me. So that's my uh, my preferred Shishigwin. Um I have one that I'll be making soon for a raffle item uh, in the Facebook group I, I moderate. I usually do raffles of certain regalia. And it's just, um, I, I, me and some other artists, um, Sam Navarro do boxes. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Chelsea will do, uh, ribbon skirts and I make various different things. Um, and this is just a way to kind of get some regalia out to um, Potawatomi people and kind of get you guys some some traditional things uh, from uh, Potawatomi artists. Uh, and also I'll, I'll usually do tutorials. So this is another one I'll be making. This is an old Calame baking soda tin. And I'll be making a shishu one out of that. Um, I'll also be using one of these and uh, deer toes to make another style of shishu. And these deer toes, I actually collected these myself. Um, and they are exactly what I said, deer toes. Um, so that's an, just another example of getting things that are close to you. Um, <clears throat> deer feet, uh, in my area, we hunt hundreds of thousands of deers in Louisiana every year. Uh, and there are all kinds of places around that, that process those deer and <clears throat> every one of them have carcass pits and they are as awesome to go to as what they sound like it's just a big hole full of dead deer carcasses and they cut off the feet of every deer and just throw them in this car in this carcass pit so if you go to those places you can ask them hey save me a bucket full of feet and they'll save them for you boil those things pluck them off dry them out or well, you know wash them off and dry them out trim them down and and you can use them, you know, 100% free, just some effort. Uh, All right, any more questions? We got 10 minutes left. Hope you guys like my flag on the ceiling here. Let's see. Thank some of you guys for attending. Shannon, Sarah, Chelsea, Deb, Emily, Jill, John, Laura, Marcy. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions from you guys? Um, sorry, I didn't have more supplies pulled out for you, uh, I guess. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can dig out some books for you guys real quick. Um, this is another thing, you know, I pulled the toes off of some of those deer legs. The other ones, I uh, tanned the deer legs out. I just skinned them out and tanned them. And with these, you can use to make uh, deer, uh, deer leg armbands, which were really really trendy in the powwow scene um a couple years ago uh, you still see them now but they're not they're not as big as they were but uh yeah 100 free just a little effort and you can use those to um trade for other resources or other regalia items that maybe you're not good at making or you just don't want to make uh some things like i was saying earlier um i don't like to make things out of wood or metal so if i want metal silver work i'll either buy it or i'll trade for it um let's see
I'm so full of Right. Yeah, it's probably living in a small apartment. All right. Any other questions? Any books that I would recommend starting with? Um, you know, there's just so many. There's just so many resources out there. Uh, as far as books, when it comes to different regalia, it just really depends on what what regalia you're trying to make. Um, oh, this is this was another example of a shesh one. Uh, different type. Um, also learned how to make these up on Walpole Island. This is a uh, made out of deer rawhide. So you basically just take a deer rawhide and you just you can make this in any any shape and you sew your two sides together. This has been dyed red and yellow of course. Um, stitch it together. Then you take uh, rice and pack this thing full of rice and that rice kind of absorbs the moisture on the inside and you let it dry dump that rice out and then you have a, a shaker that you can fill with um, seed corn and, and make a different style of shishu in that way. Okay. All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much all I got. So thanks everybody for coming. Um, I hope you, I, I, gave you a little bit of information and maybe hopefully inspired you to to go out and make your own regalia um your mazata one uh it's always it's always good to make your own culture rather than pay someone else to do it especially if they're from another tribe you know paying someone else to make potawatomi stuff is kind of weird so do your best um try some different things and and hopefully you'll find something else, find something that you love and you never know, you might be able to start you a new business. And this is a very interesting presentation. All right. Glad you guys enjoyed it. Yeah.